if you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. We're going to talk to Larissa Bilston today on Horse Chats. Now, Larissa, as you know, if you've gone back and listened to episode or chat number 120, Larissa grew up on just rural small acreage, but she's actually gone to university. She studied agriculture science and she's been lucky enough to work for the Department of Agriculture and Universities as an independent consultant. We're going to talk to her today about itchy horses, which is pretty important. But just before we get started, I just want to remind you that today's chat's been brought to you by International Horse College. Their vision is to have a world where people safely appreciate, respect and enjoy their horses and the horses appreciate, respect and enjoy their people. Have a look now, internationalhorsecollege.com. Now, Larissa, are you there? Hi, Glenys. Yes, I'm here. So we often see itching horses, you know, if it's during drought and a hot, dry summer. But this year, even like uh, La Nina and just hot, wetter than normal summer, we're seeing a lot of itchy horses. Are you seeing more itchy horses than normal? Uh, yeah, I think I am. You know, this this time of year at the end of summer, we often see horses who are itchy because they haven't had much green grass around. They've been on a lot of dry feed. Um, and that means their skin dries out because they're not eating enough omega-3 fatty acids to keep a nice, supple, healthy skin. But this year, with, with all the um, unseasonal summer rainfall that we've had in some parts, we're seeing more the kinds of itch that are typical in, I guess, in tropical or subtropical Australia where we have a hot, wet summer, lots of insects are hanging around. There's a lot of fungus and mycotoxins in the grass and in the environment and, and also just lots of different kinds of plants growing that can cause contact allergies or, or produce pollens that some horses might be sensitive to. Because some horses are affected more than others. You can have a paddock full of horses and you might get one or two that are really itchy you know one or two that are a bit itchy and the others are all fine so what actually causes the horse to get itchy well I guess they're a bit like us in that it's it's an immune response so some just are hypersensitive and probably one of the most common kinds of of sensitivities is to insect bites um with us it's often it's often mosquito bites but horses are uh, more frequently itchy when they've been bitten by by a coleocoides species midge. So they they react their immune systems overreact to the to the saliva of those midges. That's you know that's probably the most common cause of of the sorts of itch we think of when we're talking about Queensland itch or sweet itch. Um, other causes can be worms. You know, you can you can have your next red worms, or or even um, just just worms that are coming out of out of the anus and causing the tail area to, to be itchy. Mm-hmm. And when it's been wet, like it has this summer, mycotoxin ingestion also can cause itch. So I suppose before we treat it, we actually need to know the cause of the itch. So how can the owner identify the cause of the itch? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question, and and obviously knowing what's caused the itch means that the treatment that you give is is more likely to be uh, focused and successful. So we can get a fairly big hint about what's causing the itch by looking at what's going on in the environment around the horse in terms of where it's living, whether there's standing water hanging around, so that there are lots more insects breeding. But also by looking at the horse itself and knowing what its history has been over previous seasons and whereabouts it's actually scratching. So as I mentioned earlier, for most horses who have got chronic itch, it tends to be the insect bites from the midges that cause itchiness. And you'll generally see those horses scratching their head, their ears, eyes, mane, even along their top line. And usually they'll scratch their tails and their backside. So those horses who are itchy due to insect sensitivity, that, that's the kind of pattern you see in their itch, that top, that top side scratching. 
when a horse has got an actual contact allergy or the allergy is caused or the itchiness, sorry, is caused by mycotoxins, you might see hives come on those horses just, and that can occur anywhere. You know, they'll just break out in those really irritated lumps and just, or they just might start scratching and there's not usually a pattern for that. When it's neck threadworm, so that's the little parasitic nematode on Caserca cervicalis, those nematodes are actually also related to the mid situation because the mid just carry those little, those little nematodes. When the larval form of the nematode is in the horse's skin, it actually becomes insisted in the nuchal lig- ligament of the neck. And when that happens, the horse will get itchy around the head, neck, chest, shoulders, and the underside of the belly. Once those little baby nematodes insisted in the nuchal ligament they're resistant to worming so there is you know actually dealing with them can become quite tricky if your horse is only scratching its tail and its hindquarters the first thing to look at is does it have pinworms or other sort of intestinal parasites that you but you pretty much need to rule out before deciding that that the itch is caused by something else so Larissa, this itch cycle leading to chronic itch tell us a little bit about that so usually with a horse that becomes chronically itchy, you know, a horse that, that scratches every year or maybe scratches for months on end and you just can't can't clear it up, can't stop it, there are usually multiple factors and they have an additive effect. Regardless of the trigger that causes the horse to start itching in the first place, so whether it's midges or mycotoxins or worms or some sort of allergy, the horse starts rubbing and scratching. That rubbing and scratching irritates the skin, it causes inflammation in and under the skin. And when there is broken skin, um, bacteria and opportunistic fungi can get in there, which make the horse even itchier. And you then start to need to be dealing with um, antibacterial and, and antifungal sorts of treatments to help overcome those secondary infections. As this goes on over time, the horse's immune system becomes weakened. It's overworked. There's just chronic inflammation going on, which is really hard for the body to overcome. And and it takes a multi-pronged approach, I guess, to break the itch cycle and start to heal the horse. So I'm just thinking about itchy horses, you know, and you see a horse with itch and you just get so sad. It's it's not a nice thing at all. What about good nutrition? Can that help an itchy horse? Absolutely. So, you know, because chronically itchy horses do end up with that overworked and, and weakened immune system and they've got inflammation that just doesn't want to settle down, it's really important to make sure that you're providing that horse's body with correct mineral balance so that you're ensuring that the immune system's got all the nutrients that it needs to work optimally and to help heal the body. You can also look at feeding additional antioxidants. So that includes things like vitamin C and E, um, bioflavonoids, organic selenium, those sorts of antioxidants. A horse with, with severe itch, is probably creating higher levels or the inflammation is creating higher levels of free radicals in the skin. So feeding the extra antioxidants helps to reduce the impact more quickly of the of the free radicals in the body in those hypersensitive horses. The other thing that we can do from a dietary point of view for a horse, almost regardless of the cause of the itch, is to give those horses more omega-3 fatty acids than we might give paddock mate who's not so itchy. So we're really wanting to make sure that they're getting more omega-3s than they are omega-6s because that helps to modulate the inflammatory processes in the body. And when those omega-3s are marine-sourced, and I'm talking especially here about DHA, it's noted for for its role in skin health. There's been a lot of research done in in animals like dogs using DHA to settle down skin inflammation and and reduce spots and itch in dogs. But there's also work in horses, and we know that adding omega-3s, especially DHA, helps horses with inflammatory reactions in the skin. So it's definitely something that is well worth a try 
in a horse that's itchy, it's probably going to be part of the solution. It's not a medicine. It's not going to, you couldn't just feed, feed omega-3s and expect your horse horse's itch to clear up with everything else going wrong in its environment. But it's definitely an important thing that we can add in there to help the horse's body heal. All right. Well, it's important. So if we suspect the horse has got intestinal worms or neck thread worms, is that what we should do or is it something different for those worms? So you really need an effective worming protocol for intestinal worms um, and for for your neck thread worms. Best to talk to your vet about the best approach for your for your horse in your area. Um, once upon a time, you know, vets and, and chemical companies used to recommend regular timed worming of horses. But because we're seeing such high levels of resistance of worms to drugs, we're really wanting to only worm horses when, where and if they need worming. So your vet will probably talk to you about having faecal egg counts done. But Knowing which parasites are likely to be causing your horse to have an itchy bum or tail has an impact on which wormer is going to be the most effective. So I'm talking there not about the brand name, but about the active ingredients that are going to be the most effective against that type of worm. And how often you need to give it as well, which needs to tie into the life cycle of the worm in the horse's body and the pasture so that so that it's being treated when the worm is at its most susceptible. Pasture management practices also come into the picture. So, you know, whether you're picking up poo or rotating paddocks or slashing or spreading manure as part of your, your worm management program. Basically, if your horse has got an itchy bottom, it's worth talking to your vet about worms to, to find out when, where and how you should be worming your horses and that's going to vary according to the climate, the season and the species of the parasite that you're managing. But it's, it's a good one to rule out before you go on and start to worry about whether there are other sorts of itches going on as well. Um, it can be a good idea if you if you are worming your horse, especially if you're worming it repeatedly, it can be a good idea to just throw some probiotics in there as well to just help the good gut microbes uh, recover from the from the worming process. Um, because again, once we've, when we've got a horse who's a little bit compromised in the way its immune system is working, um, everything that we can do, including looking after the gut microbiome, is, is going to be uh, in your horse's favour. All right, I think that's an important point there. Yeah. What about say they've got an insect bite sensitivity? You know, what management strategies have we got that we can help manage those horses with the insect bite sensitivity? That's a, a really good question. Usually I recommend to people that they take a multi-pronged approach to dealing with horses who have insect bite sensitivities. So, you know, we need to we need to as much as we can keep the insects away from the horse. So that will often mean using a rug and that includes covering the horse's tail and ears and eyes. Um there are rugs out there that are very lightweight that do cover the horse, even even covering the belly. But you can often do a fairly good job with just more standard rugs and fly marks. I also think that having an effective insecticide repellent is important. A lot of the ones that you spray on only work for 20 or 30 minutes, so they're great for when you're going for a ride, but they're not so effective for protecting your horse especially through the evening time when the insects are biting the most. So generally a stronger insecticide, often often a more concentrated permethrin, and you can buy rugs that have got that impregnated into them. With my itchy horses, I tend to just use a, a dropper and put the insecticide along the top line of the rug, along the seams and, and around the binding of the ears and the eyes, where the horse, depending on where the horse is the most itchy. So using a rug to prevent them being bitten, using fly masks or or rugs with goggles to keep the the insects away from their eyes, using an effective insecticide repellent. Um, You can also look at doing things like trapping or spraying insects 
in the environment. Don't keep those itchy horses in a paddock that's got standing water. So keep them away from dams. Keep them away from puddles or don't let troughs get full of, of old yucky water that's breeding insects in it. So the insecticides, the, the keeping the insects off the horse. Oh, if you're stabling your horse or if you've got the ability even to bring your horse into a, a screen stable that's got fly screens up or a fan running in it through the evening, just just those hours when the insects are their most active, that can be another another strategy that you can employ. And then the rest of it is, is more relating to treatment, I suppose. So... Definitely with these horses, do the nutritional things that I talked about. Definitely do the DHA form of the omega-3s. And choose your skin care regime for these horses really carefully. So if you're noticing that that your itchy horse has got flaky skin, 90% of the time that is indicating that there's a bacterial, a secondary bacterial infection present. So you're going to be needing to use some sorts of creams or medicated shampoos to manage the bacteria or fungi that might have gotten into the broken skin. Just bear in mind if you're using shampoos on these horses that you use one that's been made for a horse. Horses have thinner skin, it's more sensitive than humans, so you really do need to be using a shampoo that's designed for horses to limit the irritation that their skin has at being washed. You can wash too much too because you don't want to be washing those natural oils off the skin. The oils are protecting the skin, they're holding the moisture in and they're helping keep it intact. So we want to be using the shampoo to keep them clean enough to help them not be itchy and to help reduce their bacterial infections, but we don't want to overdo it and dry the skin too much. And I guess the flip side of that coin comes down to the creams and lotions that we use. If I'm treating a horse that I'm washing, say, once a week, um, I'll often need to be applying some sort of antibacterial or antifungal cream or even a moisturising cream in between time. But again, overdoing it can make the skin too moist, which creates an environment that those bacteria and fungi really love. And so there's always going to be a bit of a knife's edge balance between clearing up the skin and soothing irritation and over-drying or over-moistening. It's a little bit of a balancing act, I'm afraid, but if you are doing as many of those things as you can to help protect the horse from being bitten and to help the, uh, the lesions heal up, you're going to be doing the best thing you can for a horse that has hypersensitivity to insect bites. You talked earlier about mycotoxins. So what signs are there when mycotoxins are causing your horse to itch? Are they different to, say, the insects or the intestinal worms? There are lots of different kinds of mycotoxins because mycotoxins are produced by fungi and there are, you know, literally hundreds, thousands probably of of fungi that a horse might come across in its environment. Um, We sort of have families of mycotoxins that tend to be the most common ones we, we see causing issues in horses. But when it comes to where the itch occurs, it can be it can be a bit more random. It can be a little bit hard to say that is that is likely to be an itch caused by mycotoxin. But when you see a horse who, when you're doing everything you can, um, assuming that you know you've ruled out worms as best you can, you're managing the itchy horse well for insects, and yet it still seems to stay itchy, and you can't see that there's any fungal or bacterial issues underlying. Mycotoxins in a, in a humid environment are often the culprit. Um, you can't see them, but if you're noticing um, some of your horses maybe are getting greasy heel when they normally wouldn't or mud fever when they're not standing around in mud, they might be getting, they might be photosensitive as well, you know, so they're getting what looks like really severe sunburn on their skin, often on noses or on on heels or socks. That's a dead giveaway quite often that mycotoxins are part of your problem. 
So it's a little bit it's a little bit understanding what sorts of things mycotoxins can do, and if you're noticing a horse but you're just not sure why it's itchy, nothing seems to make sense. But if you if you marry that up with some of these other mycotoxin symptoms, so it might be just really uncharacteristic spookiness, or its coat might be dull, and yet you know it's got a good diet. Um, things like that can tip you off that it's it's worth trying a, an effective mycotoxin binder. I always recommend that people have a look at the broadest spectrum ones they can get, but preferably not one that's going to bind up the nutrients that your horse needs to consume and, and use to stay healthy. Right. Well, you talked earlier on about vets, you know, and talking to them as your local vets. So local vets are great. They're really good idea about what's going on in the area, you know, what plants are growing, what sensitivities horses or, you know, other animals have. And, you know, you talk to them about, you know, the worming protocol, the effective worming protocol, but when else do you call the vet? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Glenn. If your local vet's going to have a really good handle on what sorts of pattern um, he or she might be seeing with, with horses in your area. Chances are if you've got itchy horses, you're not alone. Other people are going to be have, experiencing similar problems. If your horse suddenly breaks out in hives and they're really severe, talk to your vet because really quick action to either get some sort of topical cream or have an injection that has an antihistamine in it to just settle that down and get on top of it straight away can be a well worth the investment. Um, for longer term, more chronic things, vets have access to tools that you can't buy over the counter. So you might need prescribed creams or shampoos um, or even injections that perhaps have steroids or so on in them to reduce the inflammation and help you get on top of the itch to break that equine itch cycle so that you can manage it without drugs moving forward. Um, but, yeah, your local vet's definitely a, a really valuable resource and, and don't leave it till it's till it's too late and and everything's that much harder and your horse is really suffering before you you chat to your local vet. All right, great advice. Um, yeah, we sort of talked before. You know, about Larissa's qualifications. She's saying she's not a vet. She works with vets and supports vets. But there's something else, Larissa. You've sent me a just a flyer, okay? And it's titled "Oh No, It's Itchy Scratchy Season Still." Now, are you happy if we use that flyer for people if they come onto your chat, come onto your page at Horse Chats? Are you happy if they can download that flyer from us? Absolutely, yes. If you if you can make a link to that, yep, um, available for people to download, that'd be that'd be terrific. I've also got um, a, a nutrition library on the Pharmalogic website, and there's a. There's a bunch of blogs there that deal with sort of skin health and itch and mycotoxins and things. I'm, I'm happy for you to put the link to that there for folk to, to have a look at if they if they right. want to learn more. So if people would just like to go to horsechats.com, you've just got to search for Larissa and you'll, you'll, Larissa's been here a few times. I think you've already had six chats at Larissa and talking about a wide variety <laughs> that many of already. subjects. Yeah, yeah. So we're into seven now. So if you, if you, um, even for any of them, just down the bottom, if you search for Larissa, all the chats will come up. And at the bottom of those pages, well, you'll get a link to Pharmalogic. If you go to Pharmalogic, you can contact Larissa through there and her contact details. You have people to contact you, Larissa? Absolutely, okay. yes. Glad to. Glad to help someone manage an itchy horse any day of the week. <laughs> okay, then. So all the, all the contact details will be there and she can let you know, you know, specifically about what products she uses um, and just give you a little bit more in-depth. I mean, you know, we've sort of gone into a fair bit of depth here, but a bit more in-depth information about itchy horses. And I think, you know, I just think itchy horses are so uncomfortable. Your, your heart goes out to them sometimes. They just look at you and you know how itchy they are and you just want to be able to do something for them. And sometimes you might have already tried a few different avenues of trying to help your horse, but it just nothing's just worked. So talk to Larissa. She's got a really in-depth knowledge of not only about itchy horses, but how to help fix them, you know. And she's not saying don't go to a vet. She's saying, look, try these first. And if they don't work, go to a vet. That's right. You know, don't underestimate the ability of good nutrition to help a horse when mm -hmm. it's being treated by a vet for anything. And 
remember with itch that the optimal treatment might change over time depending on what's going on, you know, with humidity and your horse's skin moisture level and the environment type of and level of infection. There's just so many factors come into it. So you really do need to be flexible and adaptable and, and use as much information as you can get your hands on. Okay, perfect. All right, well, you've given us lots of information there, Larissa, and people can contact you if they want to know something specific. I mean, what you've given us is general information, but if they want to know something specific about their horse, they can contact you. So thanks for coming today. Enjoy the chat and um, look forward to chatting with you another time. Thanks, Glynis. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. If you've enjoyed this chat, then please comment, rate and subscribe. If you'd like any changes or recommendations for guests, then please contact us through horsechats.com. And while you're online, have a look at the government accredited courses at internationalhorsecollege.com. Registered Training Organisation 31352. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below. 